people want me to look at the books. And I was really not doing it for the money ever. I was doing it for the love of the music. I didn't want to be told that we were X amount of money in the hole on any project or, in the, or for the company uh, totally. So, but at the time that uh, the levees broke, it was like everybody went their separate ways and it gave me the opportunity with the company to have a, an excuse or whatever it might be. Yeah, I let everybody go. go. And um, I was back to running the company by myself from a coffee shop, from a computer in a coffee shop basically. I took my family, my three children. I, uh, I, had, I took my family to Austin, where my parents also went because they lost their house in New Orleans. So we were all living in a nice home in Austin. My parents were gracious to allow me to leave the kids with them so that I could go back and forth to New Orleans and work on my business and work on my home. I decided not to rebuild the office space. Uh, but I was also fortunate that earlier that year I had met a beautiful young woman who was a fresh attorney um, who, who lived uptown New Orleans. And all she lost, and all she lost physically in Katrina was a six pack of Diet Coke that was sitting in her refrigerator because she had been staying at our house so much that she had no food in her refrigerator. She just, so she didn't even have a refrigerator issue, a stinky refrigerator having to be put out on the street. But it gave me the opportunity to have some place to stay when I came back to New Orleans. And I was able to stay for whether it was a weekend or whether it was uh, in the case of around Jazz Fest when I stayed here for a month. It gave me an opportunity that most people didn't have. Most people did not have the ability to just pick up and go and come back and check on their business and check on their house and rebuild their home. I was, yeah, pick up. I was uh, fortunate, well, pick up. fortunate in that. Um, the right. neighborhood that pick I lived in, yeah, where everybody lost their home. Everybody had at least four feet and as much as nine feet of water. We had 450 homes in our neighborhood. A woman uh, by the name of uh, Denise Thornton, whose husband runs the Superdome, he's the general manager of the Superdome, uh, Doug Thornton. Those are two heroes in this city, as far as I'm concerned, because Doug, in, in the whole symbolism of getting the Superdome back together, was huge for this city, a huge uh, spot for the And then Denise, in a different way, Denise put together an organization called the Beacon of Hope. And basically, she got a grant from the guy who used to own half of the, Pelic, uh, the Hornets. She got $50,000. So, well, she created this organization. She basically went out and bought lawnmowers and weed whackers and had a fax machine. And in our neighborhood, she gave people access to the office space, little office space in her cabana. She rebuilt her house very quickly. She got on the sewage and water board and she called the railroad. And she called the, and she stayed on, up on top of, she mapped out where all the homeowners who owned every who owned every piece of property, how to contact them, their email addresses, their phone numbers. She said, if you're not gonna come in back in town and fix your apart, fix your uh, house, then we're going to, we, you give us permission to mow your yard for you. We'll find a church group, we'll find an organization that'll come in and gut your home. Do you need help with that? Because I lived in a neighborhood, I bought my house from a, a single old lady, and there were single old ladies, two on either side of me. It was an older neighborhood. So all of these people that were mostly in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, they weren't coming back. They, they went to live with their families, they went to get an apartment somewhere, he gave them a reason to scale down. So what Denise did is she stayed on top. So the neighbor next to me, whose house was maybe had a lot of grass and was not gutted yet, she got on them and said either gut it or we'll get it, gut it for you. But if you can afford to gut it, go ahead and do it yourself. If can't, we'll do it for you. Give us permission to do so. So it just, our neighborhood is now 99.9% .9 back complete. Home prices are all better than they were at the time of uh, the storm. And it's because of her and a few other volunteers who, who got together and did that. Then she took that, what she did in our neighborhood, and she actually cookie cut that in other neighborhoods that were slower to come back.